As a puppy, Bentley seemed like a perfectly normal pit bull terrier. But as he grew, so did his oversized tongue, affecting his ability to eat and breathe. Yeah. Take a look at Bentley's story. We opened our rescue three years ago. We met the most amazing dogs, and they've just taught me so much about life. About one year ago, I met Bentley. He had been to two different vets, and he's like, no one can tell me, I don't know what to do. When I saw Bentley, I was shocked. His muzzle was completely swollen, like two to three times the normal size of a pit bull terrier. Bentley's tongue was so thick, it was as thick as a steak. There was so much gruel that the owner had mops in almost every room. You couldn't even be affectionate with Bentley without being covered in drool. The tongue was so heavy and thick, it actually flattened his lower jaw and the bottom teeth were coming out at a 90 degree angle. When he would eat, he literally would chew pieces of his tongue. I had never seen anything like it. I took him to three different vets, like I just didn't know what it was. So then I called Tufts and I got this amazing liaison. And she said, I have a doctor here who's actually doing studies on cadaver dogs that have big tongues. And within 10 minutes, Dr. Kudic called me he said the surgery had never been done on a live dog, so he was going to have to do a CAT scan, map out all of his blood vessels, and basically he bulked the tongue. He actually didn't know if it would work, but he was very excited to try it and to be able to give Bentley a better chance at life. And here to share what happened next is Maureen, the co-founder of Operation Pausability Project, veterinary surgeon and professor at Cummings School of Veterinary Medicine, Dr. Ray Kuji. Welcome to the show, both of you, a pleasure. Hi guys. Yeah, thank you for inviting us. Dr. Kuji, I'm very interested. When this pup patient first walked through your door, what were your first impressions? And when I first saw Bentley, I knew that I was gonna use a version of a surgery that I had been studying for like bulldogs, dogs that have a short nose potentially, if, if they have a really bad case. And uh, I also knew that that would work for this case of macroglossia with Bentley. Macroglossia basically just means an enlarged tongue. And um, if you look at Bentley's CT image, uh, you can see that he can barely close his mouth. You know, the tongue is so large. Now, I, I've been involved with glossectomies in humans mm -hmm. back in my head and neck cancer days. Uh, couple things to know about the tongue. I mean, it is one big muscle. It's yeah. all muscle. If yeah. you remember, it's right. muscles going in three different mm -hmm. directions. Extremely vascular, meaning that the blood supply to the yeah. tongue is like second it's to none. So you had your hands hands full there, Dr. Kuji. Tell us yeah. how, how the surgery actually went. Basically, you know, I performed that midline glossectomy and it was a lot more aggressive than what I was doing on the donated cadavers, uh, you know, prior. But this is the first case of a tongue reduction surgery of this type uh, on a dog uh, that I know of. So, um, yeah, I learned a lot. The first day, it actually, the tongue looked about the same, but that was because of the swelling right. that was present. Mm -hmm. So after the first two or three days, the swelling started to go down and then on a recheck, you know, after Bentley had gone home, it looked great, and uh, Maureen was really happy. Yeah. Uh, well, kudos to Dr. Kuji. Right? 100%. <laughs> that's, that's poetry. That I mean, fantastic. really, Doc, impressive, great work.